from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Good morning. How's everybody doing? <laughs> so my name's Pam Jackson. I'm the director for the Center for the Book, which is a really awesome place in the Library of Congress. And I'd like to welcome you here to the Young Reader Center, which is another really, really great place. How many of you are here for the first time? Awesome. Thanks for being here. So some of the hands didn't get raised. Some of you have been here before, yes? Thank you. Or no? You just weren't responding earlier? Okay, great. All right, so let me ask you, where are you guys from? Okay. Harriet Tubman. Hmm. Where is that? Washington, D.C., Columbia Heights. <laughs> Columbia Road. Is it on Columbia Road? In Col no? Okay. Okay, great. So, and then what grades do we have? What grades? Is everybody third grade? Yes. Welcome third grade. What's wonderful about third grade? What do you like most about third grade? Recess. We'll just, we, this is a time you can shout it out. So recess. Recess. Two recesses. You have two recesses every day? Yes. Wow. And you get to take on more responsibility. Wow. That's awesome. What's that? One recess in the mornings? Wednesdays. Oh, on Wednesdays you only have one. So what's today? Today's not Wednesday. So you have two recesses today? So on Wednesdays you get out at 3.15. And every, what, at Monday through Saturday you get out at 4.15? That's a lot. You have extended day? And do you really have school on Saturday or did you just miss that? No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You don't go to Saturday? I think we've done a good You don't go to school on Sundays either? Wow, so you have Saturdays and Sundays off? Wow. I don't know. Did you bring all of these? Okay, great. Okay. All right, so sometimes, they, yeah, so how, you no school on Monday? Heavy. What is Monday? Columbus Day, okay. So you know, we're actually open on Monday, Columbus Day, so you can come back and visit us again. Bring your family and friends. We're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 4.30. On a day like Monday when you don't have school, we're here, so it's a great place to come. There are a couple of rooms full of books back there. You can lounge around and hang with your family and friends, so we do invite you back for that. And let's talk a little bit about why we're here today. So why are we here today? Oh, look up. Yes. Well, it's a field trip, yes. To know about books? Yes, ma'am. So we can learn? Okay, we can learn different types of books. Does anybody know what types of books we're going to talk about today? What type of book it is? Who hasn't talked yet? Yes. Chicken in the, oh, is there something behind me? Oh, yes, chicken in the kitchen. And we have with us uh, somebody who's kind of had something to do with the book. So what do you know about books, right? So yes, yes, ma'am. They can teach you some things. And in this book, we might learn about chickens and we might learn about kitchens, right? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, I'm sorry. You could find adventures in books, absolutely. What else? You can learn about lessons in books, that's true. Yes, way in the back. You can find puzzles. Yes, you can sometimes find puzzles. So who makes books? Yes, sir. Authors, right. And so we have the author of this book with us. It's really great. She's going to do a talk about her book, a little bit about the motivation for it, and... Um, there's another person that's with her that helped make the book. Who do you think that is? 
Illustrator. What's an illustrator? Yes. Draws the pictures, that's right. So we have the author and the illustrator here with us for Chicken in the Kitchen, Nanadi Okafor and Mirdat Amini, and they will be with us shortly. They're in the back wrapping up something and they'll be with us shortly. Um, so tell me, has, have any of you, raise your hands if you've authored a book or a story. How about authored a story? How about a story? Okay, great, hands down. How many of you have author, uh, illustrated a story? Okay, great. All right, and how many of you, so I asked this before, let me try it again. How many of you have met other authors and illustrators? Thanks. Yeah? Okay, great, where were you when you did that? Were you here, did you meet them here? No, where were you? School? So you've had authors and illustrators come to school and talk to you about their books? That's really great. All right? All right, so let me tell you a little bit more about who's with us in the room. So we have a great partner. The Young Readers Center partners with Everybody Wins DC, which is a really extraordinary group of individuals who help make this event possible. They coordinated with your teachers to bring you here, and they helped actually um, facilitate the books that will be gifts, gifts that you'll get to take home with you and Jenny wave your hand is from everybody wins DC she's with us helping today so thank you for being here we also have with us Brenda Randolph and Brenda is with the Children's Africana Book Awards I mean let me pause the Children Africana Book Awards is the organization that this book is actually we're celebrating the authors and the, the author and the illustrator as a winner of a special award and it's from that organization and Brenda Randolph is with us, and she's with the Outreach Council of the African Studies Association. Wave your hand, say hello. Hi. And what you got? Oh. Oh, beautiful. So when, the book so when books win awards, that seal can be placed on them to acknowledge that they are award winners. All right, great. And it looks like, let me just check my notes here to make sure I've covered everything. So, yes, we're going to get ready to actually meet the author and the illustrator who are available, uh, ready to come join us. So what do you guys know? The author's going to talk a little bit about the motivation of her book, and then she's going to read the story. So what do you guys know you should be doing when she starts to do that? Yes, ma'am. Listening. So what do we listen with? Ears, everybody do like this. Make sure I know you know where your ears are. Okay, great. And so when we're listening, what are we not doing? Talking. Talking. Okay, what do we talk with? Okay, do you like this? Everybody clear? So nothing's happening here? All the action's here? Yes, yes. Okay, so let's welcome our, and, and you're going to be excited and, and it's going to be wonderful. So you'll have questions and we'll have time for that. So... You can hold those to the end. So while she's leading, while the author and the illustrator are leading, we're going to be listening. Do your ears again. And then when they're finished, I'm going to come back and say it's time for questions, and then you'll be able to do what? Talk. Talk. Okay, so no talking. Talking. Ready? Question? Well, no, it's not so much a movie. I think there will be some, some pictures here that show you the, a bigger version of the book as she's going through it. So it won't be a movie. It's going to be way more exciting than a, a movie. All right, let's welcome our authors, Nanandi and Mirkdot. <laughs> Author and illustrator, oh, come on. How are we supposed to get through? <laughs> oh, I guess we need to... Let's make a path. For yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Excuse me. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So today I'm going to read you my book, Chicken in the Kitchen. And this is a book that, um, a story that I read or that I told to my daughter for years when she was little. 
And um, the reason why I told this story to her, the reason why I made it up, was because my daughter just loved chickens. And she did not feel that chickens got their due respect. So, so I came up with a story about a chicken, a very, very special chicken. And um, over the years, I told her this story, and it kind of developed. And then eventually, when the opportunity to write a children's book came along, this was the first story that popped into my head. And so it's wonderful to see it realized in this book. So I'm going to read this to you. It's titled, Chicken in the Kitchen. Okay. <clears throat> Let me get comfortable here. It was late at night. A noise had woken on Hugo. She climbed out of bed and crept quietly towards the kitchen. <gasps> oh my, on Hugo whispered. What was she going to do? There was a giant chicken in the kitchen was going to spoil the food her mother and her aunties had cooked for the new yam festival the next day. She had to do something. Bok, bok, puk, hark, said the chicken happily. The new yam festival marked the beginning of the harvest season. It was a time for being thankful, dancing, seeing friends and family, and of course, eating lots of yams. Anugo couldn't let the chicken ruin the yam dishes in the fridge. What was wrong with it? Anugo wondered. The chicken was causing a lot of mischief. Anugo wished she knew where her friend, the woodwit, was. He was a nature spirit. He would know what to do. Anugo tried to muster up some courage. I'm going to just tell it to leave. Or maybe not. It was time to get help from the woodwit. Where is it? Anugo wondered. The woodwit could travel through anything made of wood. It could be almost anything, anywhere. Maybe it was playing outside in the coconut trees. If so, she would never be able to find it. Are you there? Anugo called. There you are, Anugo said. There you are, the woodwit said. It laughed. <laughs> you have a chicken in your kitchen. You want to get, and you want to get rid of it. How do you know? Oh, I know everything that the wood knows, the woodwit said. Anugo didn't understand what the woodwit meant, but that didn't matter. The woodwit was always saying odd things like that. Will you help me? Sure. I love being helpful. It looks quite annoyed, the woodwit said. Whatever have you done to it? I didn't do anything, Anugo insisted. How can I make it leave? Ask it, the woodwit said, but ask it in chickenese. But, but I don't speak chickenese, cried Anugo. Say, buck, buck, cluck, the woodwit suggested. But you have to say it just right. It laughed out loud. It laughed out. It burst out laughing, amused with itself. Anugo lifted her chin, clenched her fist, and said, Hello. The chicken flashed the sunniest, shiniest, sweetest smile Anugo had ever seen. Then the woodwit began to hum. It sounded like three voices and a soft drum beat. It was with the sound of the drumbeat that Anugo understood. How would she not guess it? This was more than a chicken. Buck, buck, it, it said softly. It was asking her to dance.
Later that night, when Anugo finally went to bed, she smiled to herself. Her father had told her about the powerful masquerade spirits that came to participate in the New Yam Festival. Masquerades visited the community during the festivals, ceremonies, and events. Some were spirits of, of the elements, like the land and water. Others were, were ancestors returning to dance, showing that death was a natural part of life. This one must have come for a midnight snack. At the new yam festival the next day, Anugo ate several yam dishes and saw some of the biggest yams she had ever seen. But though she watched many wonderful masquerades perform, she did not see the chicken masquerades amongst them until boom, boom, boom. <laughs> the end. <laughs> So a little bit, a little bit more about um, about chicken in the kitchen. Also, masquerades. I didn't talk much about masquerades. So masquerades are a very a deeply African tradition. All parts of Africa have their own masquerading traditions, and masquerades are basically um, they are usually men who dress up in these elaborate costumes, and these costumes are, they, they are symbols for the spirits or ancestors or people who have passed. And, um, and they come out during ceremonies, various ceremonies like weddings, funerals, parties, um, just celebrations. And they can be scary, they can be, they can be utterly terrifying, they can be funny, they can just be weird. Sometimes they can just look like a big ball of hay that dances and shakes around. It's fascinating. So in this story, because my daughter loved chickens so much and I didn't feel like chickens got enough respect, I decided to also create a masquerade chicken in this story. So that's, that's who you encountered in this story. So um, do we want to segue into the the drawing stuff. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. You want to? Well. Okay. No. You, you can go ahead. Well. So, how many of you noticed other animals in the the slide presentation of the book besides the chicken? Raise your hand if you noticed other animals. And this you get to. This is our talking part, right? So you can uh, shout out what animals did you see? I'll start over here. A cat. A cat. What'd you see? You saw the chicken? Yes, ma'am. A bear? You think you saw a bear? Okay, yes, and what'd you see? A woodchuck? Oh, wow, you guys are very observant. Really awesome. What'd you see? Did you have one? So, okay, great. Thank you. Yes, one last one. Yes. Sorry, the what? Oh, the woodwind, yes. The woodwit, okay, so the, <laughs> can anyone, um, okay, so the woodwit is a creature that, that lives in the, in li it lives in wood, it can move through wood, and it's a very smarmy, um, sarcastic, um, tricky, tricky character, and it is Anugo's best friend in this story. Can anyone, the woodwit is here with us today. Can any, has anyone seen the woodwit? Anyone? Yes. Yes. Oh, look at the woodwind. It's here. <laughs> yes, the woodwind is in all the walls, and the walls are made of wood. Um, so, okay, so yes, there were several animals in the story, correct? And Meridoc would like to, is there any animal that you, that you guys would particular, or any character in the book that you guys would particularly like her to illustrate? She drew all of the everything in this book. So, is there anything that you'd like to see? Yes. The chicken. Super chicken. Is it? Is would you say that the chicken in this story was a super chicken? It was. Yes, it was quite large. <laughs> okay. No. Okay. So you'd like. To, okay, it was kind of special. Yes, it was. 
Let's see somebody who hasn't shared with us yet. Yeah, let's get those hands up. This is the time you get to talk, so who's gonna ready for talking? Yes, in the front. Meyer. Yes. The cat. Uh, yes. My cat too, because I love kittens. You love kittens. Teeny tiny kitten. Teeny tiny kitten. And did that kitten look like your kitten? Nope. Nope. My kitten's bigger. Your kitten's bigger. <laughs> as big as the chicken? Nope. Okay. Okay, gotcha. Sure. <laughs> yes, sir. Your favorite was the chicken. Okay, great. Excellent. So what do you think? You hear well, some... Sure. Yeah. Um, so there would be the chicken, the cat, the woodwit. The woodwit. Right Woodwit's right yeah, there. So the <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Try to <laughs> okay. So I heard... Yeah. 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 I, the first thing that I should think about is this pad and the proportion of the characters. So which part of this chicken? Is? Just a reminder, this is where we'll switch back to using what? Okay, and we'll listen as she talks about how she's creating. Raise your hand. What is she doing? What is she sketching right now? Yes, in the very back. Feathers. Okay, does anybody have a question uh, about illustration as she's working? Yes, sir. What types of material does she use? Like when she created? Well, so let's start with what she's using right now. Yes. Do you need to see the chicken? <laughs> so you want to see the... You want to see the chicken. So this chicken might not Sasha, exactly because I don't have the colors. Uh, it might not be exactly right. So you're asking if she's drawing from memory? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who's got other questions about illustration, perhaps? Yes, yes, yes. How does she make the wood wit? How does she make the wood wit? Nettie sent me some pictures, and they were so beautiful, so powerful. And I, I think they, they were the. It kind of in get, got inspiration from looking at the pictures from the masquerade. It's not, you can't find him exactly in those pictures, but you know the inspiration comes from looking at him. And I just doodled and you know did the sketches and kind of show itself to me. I think. 
Well, and so this might be a good segue. Is the woodwit your creation, or is this a, a an African cultural creation that you've? It's um, the woodwit is kind of a blend between things that you know that I would hear relatives talk about, especially when they were talking about the forests. And so they'd, they'd often talk about um, spirits in the forest, and especially in the wood, in the trees. And so I would think about those, and then the woodwit came from that. Um, and the woodwit's personality, you know, very annoying, tricky personality, I, I guess I kind of came up with that. <laughs> Just fun, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. And hang on one sec, we'll, yes, we'll do, quick, do you have another mic for over there? Okay. Uh, yes. Question. Um, I was going to say, um, how does she come up with these creations? Okay, is that for the author or the illustrator? Yeah, I get it. The author, how do you, the illustrator? Okay, so the question is, how do you come up with the creations? research, you know, thorough research on the culture and the arts of the Nigerian people. And then, uh, well, I just, yeah, as I said, I always had my pad with me and pen, and I do sketching all the time, so through those sketches, there by lit little comes the characters. And then he was there to help me, you know, always advise me on the colors, the, you know. The feet. The, the, yeah, <laughs> we the talked feet, a lot about the feet. The feet. <laughs> We, we might change things as we go. So just a quick question, are, do, the, do the chickens in Nigeria mm -hmm. look different than the chickens that we might have seen here? <laughs> That's an interesting question. And um, I was always fascinated by the chickens that I would, because, okay, so I was born and raised here in the United States. And then from a young age, my parents would take um, my siblings and I back to Nigeria to meet with family. Both of my parents are from Nigeria. So we'd, we'd meet with family and we'd stay, especially in the villages, the smaller, more rural areas where especially my father had grown up. And whenever we would go, there would be chickens, just free, free range, um, chickens that are just free to do what, go wherever they want, wherever they please, all over the, the village, and they would always come back to their homes at night. So in, in the morning, you'd see them come out, scratch around, making their chicken sounds, their bucking and clucking and all of that, and then they would walk into, at some point in the day, they would just walk into the forest, and you never knew where they would go, and then they'd come back in the evening. So I was always fascinated by this. And, and also, um, one thing I noticed about the difference between the chickens that I would see here in the United States versus over there, the chickens here would be more of the, um, they'd be white, they'd be one color, they'd be more um, domesticated and um, um, fatter. And the, the ones that I would encounter were not free range. So those are the chickens that I would see here. And in Nigeria, they were free range. And they were always, um, they were skinnier, and they had longer legs. <laughs> and they're, and when you would eat them, yeah, when you would eat them, yes, um, the, the meat was tougher. And it was chewier and more flavorful, which I don't, that's not really part of the story here, because we're dealing with living chickens. But, um, but yeah, so I guess that would, be, that would be the difference, that they seemed freer and had, a chance to just be birds and have personalities and life and all of that. So yeah, that would be the difference. All right, all right so I've got one question here. Yes, sir. How did you both come together? How did the, two, to the author and the illustrator come together? Oh, great question. How did you come together? You want to answer that? Actually, it's the first time. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, I see each other. In uh, person. In person. Yeah. Maybe, we, did we? Emails yeah, we exchanged. We exchanged <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Exchange. But you know, it's through internet. I live in mm -hmm. the US, uh, UK. She lives in US, so it wasn't possible for us to meet each other in person. But we kept in touch through emails, and yeah, mm -hmm. she was it, there for me whenever I needed her help. Yes, and vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> and our um, our publisher also Did brought us, introduced us, oh, no. and so then we worked together from there. Yeah. Okay. Who knows what the pub? Who's the pub? What's a publisher? Yeah, What's a publisher? Yes, sir. What's a publisher? A publisher is, some, is someone that when 
an author and the illustrator finished the story. It is someone that that finishes f- finishes all the stuff that they, they work and and make and makes it a public public so everybody can see it. Okay, so you want to add? So great, great answer. You want to add to that a little bit? Or? Um, yeah, the, the well, yes, very excellent answer. Um, the publisher would take the story that we brought together and make it into a book and then put it out there for other people to, to get and read and all of that. So the publisher is, um, I guess, the, the, the entity that brings the author's work to, into a packaged thing, if that makes sense. That's a very simplified way of putting it, yes. All right, great, and so there's a question here. I'm gonna just yeah. come this way. How tall is the chicken? <laughs> Literally? <laughs> That's a great question. question. How tall do you think the chicken is? I think it would be eight, eight feet. Eight feet? Who else? Four feet tall? Ten? <laughs> the size of you? All of your answers are correct. <laughs> the chicken can be whatever size it wants to be because it is a powerful masquerade spirit. And um, so at some points it could be four feet. Mo- I think if it were, if it chose the size that it liked to be the most often, I'd say 10 feet. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big chicken. How many of you have seen a 10 foot chicken? Raise your hand. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, great. Excellent. <laughs> really awesome. <laughs> Okay, so do we want to, do you want to say more about what you've created? So hang on. Okay, so we're gonna ask for your ears, ears on, ears on again, because the drawing has been finished. Okay, just to show you how I start my work. I mean, I start on the composition, do lots of composition sketching, I mean, sketching on composition, and then I decide between them which one works best. Uh, well, I thought maybe, we can, do we have time to do a little bit of sketching and then at the same time we will talk with, with the children? I mean, I, I thought may, I, maybe they could give me a name of an, an animal and then I sketch and then you will give me marks um, based on how good I've done it. But I might not be able to do it <laughs> very well. Oh, you really want to go down that route? <laughs> <laughs> it's very risky thing on my part. <laughs> What? What is it? <laughs> eagle. Well, eagles is difficult. No, please don't. Okay. Okay. Oh, eagle? Do I, can I say something else? I don't know anymore. Unicorn. 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 It's not that difficult. But, uh, yes? Baby chicken. Baby chicken is very easy. Another. Uh, How about a uh, monkey? <laughs> Give it wings. <laughs> okay, so we've got. Yeah, we got. We've got. Okay, three choices. We've got a unicorn, a chick, and a monkey. Raise your hand if you want to do the the unicorn. Okay. One, two, three, four, five votes for that. Okay. Six, seven, Raise your hand sorry. if you want to do the monkey. Monkey. Once. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, raise your hand if you want to do the chick. Uh-oh. Okay, that's the chick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right. So wait, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't listening. So what's it? She just drew a chicken, and now she's drawing a chick? What's the difference? Wait, 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 way in the back. Hold on, hold on. Let me, I, I, I really, you guys are going to have to help me with this. What's the difference? That a chick is smaller and a chicken is bigger. Okay, chicken is, a chick is smaller and the chicken is bigger. Does it look like a chicken to you? I mean, I, I was supposed to give you marks. Yeah. So how about 10? Uh, is 10 good? <laughs> We're all over the place here. <laughs> We're all over the place. 
Whoa, okay. Okay, wait. And were you going to add to the difference between okay. the chick and the chicken? <laughs> okay. Uh, yes? No? Okay. Good. Big eyes. Okay. okay, hang on. Shh. Question. Um, is this yeah. The? Okay, owl. Wait, no, is this eagle or owl? Bigger eyes. <laughs> Big round eyes. Smaller head. <laughs> Smaller head. <laughs> um, yeah, we're doing eagle. <laughs> okay, so what's the difference between an eagle and a chicken? <laughs> eagle and a chicken. Hang on one sec. Oh, come on. Yes. Hmm. Chicken is a pre I mean, a uh, eagle is a predator, and a chicken is not a predator. Whoa, eagle yeah. is a predator, and a chicken is not. Okay, but then yeah, I guess yeah. my question is, what's a predator? <laughs> okay, yes, help me out. Meat eater. A predator is a meat eater. So an eagle is a meat eater, and a chicken is not. You going to help me out with this? And the chicken is a plant eater, or I mean. Okay, good question. Is the chicken a plant eater? What do chickens eat? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Wait a minute. Whatever's put. <laughs> Did I hear cheese? <laughs> I heard cheese. <laughs> <laughs> okay, chickens eat worms. Raise your hand if you agree with that. Um, but who's the bugs. chicken expert in the room? I don't know. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Close. It's <laughs> cute. <laughs> bug seeds. You know, Wait, you do know that chickens also eat fruit. Did you know that? They'll eat watermelon. If you put watermelon rinds, they will eat that too. So, yeah, um, chickens chickens will eat a lot of things. So That's there's, right. yeah, they'll eat se seeds, small worms, bugs, um, fruit. Yeah. So I, I think they'd eat worms, but I've never seen one eat worms. They, they might. I, I, I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's one other big difference that I heard for chickens versus eagles. There's one big difference that I know that I did not yet hear. So what's another difference between the chicken and the eagle? Oh, yeah, the obvious. Oh, wait, I have a hand. Somebody has, we haven't heard from yet. Yes, ma'am. Um, an eagle can fly and a chicken can. Yes. Yeah, so how many of you guys heard that? Yes. Hang on one sec. So who heard her answer? That the biggest, the, the biggest difference between a chicken and an eagle is that the chicken cannot fly, and the eagle is an expert flyer. Correct? So everyone knows that chickens can't fly. Does anyone know why chickens can't fly? I'd love to hear this answer. Okay, right, hang on, uh, yeah. hang on. Hang on. <laughs> Why can chickens not fly? I think that chickens cannot fly because they don't have hollow bones. They don't have hollow bones. Um, I they, they do have hollow bones. Um, and, and you know, um, you're talking about ostriches, though, because ostriches have very heavy bones and very dense bones. And it's because they don't fly. They're, they're actually land animals, so they run very, very fast. So, so no, but chickens do have hollow bones. They've just... I believe evolutionary, like um, in terms of evolution, they just didn't develop the ability to fly. And there are other flightless birds. Another one that I, the first one that pops into my head, um, penguins, um, the dodo, which doesn't exist anymore. Um, the, there's a parrot, there's a flightless parrot in New Zealand. Then there are other, other flightless birds, but some birds just don't develop the ability to fly because maybe they're where they, um, uh, their habitat does not, is not, um, does, makes it so that they don't need to fly. But that might be completely wrong. <laughs> and, uh, okay. yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. I just noticed something, though. I noticed that there's this book here that looks like your book, but it doesn't say what your book says. What? It is Spanish. <laughs> oh, how many of you speak Spanish? Oh, wow. Nice. Excellent. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> So is this, um, for those of you who do speak Spanish, I speak more French than Spanish, but is this a direct um, translation of Chicken in the Kitchen? Yes. It is? Good, good, thank you. <laughs> do you want to have them reach on your eagle? Oh, it's not exactly, a punch is more an owl <laughs> than an eagle. Okay, so yeah. how many of you think that this is <laughs> wood bit. You want the wood bit? You want to draw the wood
they're going to ask to draw the wood lids. <laughs> yeah. It's neither. <laughs> it's an it. Okay, while she's drawing that, I have a question for you all. Okay, so if you were in Anugo's position where you woke up one night and your parents are asleep, everyone's asleep, and you hear some noise in there, and you go and look in the kitchen and you see a giant chicken, what would you do? Oh, okay, someone on, who has on, not on. answered. Yeah. Uh, in the back, way in the back. Roger. Roger. Hit it. Oh my God. <laughs> Hi, Roger. What would you do? You wake up, middle of the night, the chicken's in your kitchen. What are you going to do? Uh, Wait, everyone, I will ask my mom. To, um, I think his name is Robert. I will actually eat him. Let's see, or Roger, thank you. Okay, wait, stand up. Hot tapas, zero. Thank so, you. Say again so everybody can hear. Uh, I don't know. I heard something about your mom and eating. Yeah, we'll <laughs> eat it. So, how many, how many go for the I'm going to eat it? Oh my goodness. <laughs> How many are going to go for I'm telling my mom? Tell your Not mom. So <laughs> Not so many. Thank you, Roger. <laughs> Chaos? Even if you Excuse see a beautiful me. chicken, or like a beautiful bird in your kitchen, would you want to eat it? Okay. So first, you want to ask yeah? one? <laughs> Did we get any answers? <laughs> Okay, this is, if you woke up in the middle of the night and the, kitchen, the chicken was in your kitchen, what are you going to do? I would grab a rope, jump on the kitchen's back and say, yee-haw! <laughs> oh my gosh. So she's going to lasso the chicken. <laughs> going to scream to my mom and wake her up. Scream to mom, wake her up. Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> I'm going to freak out. She's just going to freak out. Yeah, that's a good answer, that's too. <laughs> okay, look, wait, look, we have the wood with. Yes. <laughs> good. <laughs> well done. Okay, hang on one sec. What were that's you going to say? What would, would say. Hang on, let's listen to our friend. Zero. <laughs> I was going to say I will kick the chicken out the window. Oh, he's going to kick the chicken out the window. <laughs> okay. So, huh? It's a good chicken. So I want everybody, zero. Is it at zero? Zero. Zero. So here's the woodwit. And now we're going to evaluate the new version. Scale of one to two. We're not going to evaluate the woodwit. We're just going to give her a round of applause. <laughs> So, thank you all. So we would like to say thank you so much for you all being here. And yes, we'd like yes. to thank our author and illustrator for sharing themselves, their work, and their talents. It's been a great opportunity to be with you, to hear your story, and learn about a little bit more about Nigerian culture, and to learn about 10 foot size chickens has been really, I'm going to take that away. Yes, ma'am. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.